You don't see me winning, they your ass need LASIK They be out here talking bad, it's basic They ain't hungry for the bag, I crave it I go crazy with a shot, you graze them They be talking like they not amazing You be dreaming while you sleep, I chase them Rick, Bobby, Whip, I'm racing Back at a party with Trevor Spitter and some real hitters Yeah, that's our environment They be selling dreams, we ain't buying it I just want the cheese, multiplying it That's your main chick, she keep trying it I feel sorry for you, let me play your ass a song On the world's smallest violin Came in peace, but I'm with all the violence in a bad behavior Thank you for hopping on. Can you um, start off by talking a little bit about your background? Yeah, so um, growing up, it was just, you know, it's mad regular. Just, I went to public school here in this little town. It's called Oakland, New Jersey. Like, everyone kind of knows each other and stuff already. So it was a pretty normal, like, background and stuff. But I was just always playing music in the house and stuff. Like, my parents were always playing music. I was always, from a young age, like, really interested in just listening to music and stuff. Mm -hmm. So... I was always playing instruments and, and guitars, drums, all that. I started off with the drums. And then it turned into producing when I was getting more into like the technical side of like, like computers and stuff like that. For a while, I was really into like gaming and like not, not just gaming as much as just like software and, and using computers in general. I was always like hacking stuff and like jailbreaking iPhones and stuff. So like I just ended up one day downloading uh, Fruity Loops, and that's how I started. Yeah, that's cool. And how did you start getting connected with people? That was really with Trevor, honestly, is how I stepped into the actual, like the first time I ever spoke to anybody in like, the actual industry. By the way, this studio is also like Trevor's second home, you know what I mean? This is where Trevor comes to record all his stuff. Me and him, he lives like five minutes away from me, so. But, um, so yeah, Trev ended up signing a production deal with um, the guy who's now the vice pre or no, the president a &R of Republic Records. His name is Duro. So mm -hmm. him and his uh, his other manager, Molly, they, um, what's it called? They teamed up, had a little production company. They signed Trevor. So once he started, like, well, I mean, once he signed with them, he started, you know what I'm saying? Moving around the industry. They started putting him to, you know, PR people and, camera guys and this and that in new york so we kind of found like our place a little bit in the city with you know just like the the younger fashion kids and like you know photography kids and stuff like that so that's mm -hmm. kind of how we got started in in the industry after that what really you know took it a, a step further is when um trevor's manager is i don't know if you know who wayno is but he's at uh right now he's at everyday struggle in asylum records mm -hmm. but um so Wayno was managing uh, TJ Porter. He's uh, an artist out of Harlem who's now signed to Jack Jam. Mm -hmm. So when I started working with him, he, he had brought him to me. He said, yo, I need a producer, blah, blah, blah. So Molly, Trevor's manager, sent him to me. I started working with him, blah, blah, blah. And then like after, you know, like a year or whatever of working with TJ, TJ's other manager, L, reached out to me and said, yo, like, let's like do you have a manager blah 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 and then we worked out a little something now he's managing me and he's bringing me around to all the you know what i'm saying connections and, and people he knows through working with tj porter and stuff like that so and, that's that's kind of how it started yeah. and who is that this is my manager l he, he goes by oh l. l's your manager I, yeah you you met l at mitch's crib that one time actually yeah i like l i was actually trying to um get him to interview but i know he's been busy yeah, he's super busy, but he's he's definitely um he's definitely a, a huge playmaker when it comes to my career. So, did you expect to get into music as a career? Like, is this what you want to do? Yeah, this is definitely what I wanted to do. Like through like I, I was when I was in college, I was just at community college, and there's obviously nothing wrong with that. Like I know a lot of people who do that, but um I was at community college, and I was just constantly switching my majors going from like film and, and, you know, communications, networking at one point. Cause like I said, I'm, I'm like, I was always into the techie stuff, mm -hmm. but um, it just never worked out in my, in the back of my head, I always knew that like, I didn't want to have like a normal job on do something creative and like freelance, you know, like I always wanted to work for myself. So um, it's kind of a struggle, but it's more, it, it just, I'd rather struggle and have a more difficult time doing this than something else. So. Now, do you produce and also rap and, and or sing, or are you mainly focused? I just produce, like I, you know, I always have ideas of how the songs want to go in my head while I'm making it. 
but I, I'm not a singer by any means or a rapper by any means. I just can't get the, uh, I could hardly, you know, like there, there have been days where I've went into that booth right over there in that corner when no one was here at like 3 a.m. and tried, but it, it just doesn't come out right <laughs> for me. Damn, out. I was going to ask you to, to start freestyling. Yeah, no, nah, I can't do it. I've tried. I, I freeze up. Even this, even just interviewing, I'm, I get nervous, you know, so I can't. But when it comes to getting on a microphone, it, I just freeze up. I can't do it. <laughs> Who was it that you just dropped and they premiered it on Worldstar? That's uh, Casanova. So that song I had done back in, it was almost a year ago now. I did that, um, the a r for his project at Rock Nation had a, uh, it's like a beat camp where he brings all these producers and stuff. Mm -hmm. So like, and they just play beats. Like Casanova was there and stuff. Like, so I was able to meet him in person, play him some beats, and he ended up liking one of the beats that I played. So I got placed on his album. The video just dropped now, like last week it was, I think. Wow. Was there ever a point where, you started to really realize how good you were at producing? Uh, honestly, man, like not even, not even till like a year, like may maybe like half a year ago, I started actually really liking my beats. And I'm being completely honest with that. I tell that to people all the time for the longest time. When I first started working with Trevor, he was um, like, he was coming here all the time and I would always run sessions for him and stuff. But when he first started coming here, he wasn't coming here as a, 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 a like, for my beats you know he was coming here just for a place to record I wasn't even really making beats like that mm -hmm. I was actually making EDM stuff and like dance music before I had really linked with Trevor that was when I started making like hip-hop beats so like not until like and even sometimes like I'll just be making beats you know like yesterday for example I was making a beat just leave the whole thing I thought it sounded like crap you know so it's like I only was really started getting satisfied like like re very very recently with the way the actual sound was like i'm always you know looking to improve and, and and stuff like that but that and i guess you know like si seeing my song next to you know chris brown on casanova's album like stuff like that is started starting to solidify it more for me mm -hmm. but um uh, i'm always working to, to to make it sound better so I'm not, I'm not usually satisfied with the sound just recently you started getting a lot more recognition because of Casanova, right? Yeah, that, that definitely started pushing, like that, that brought, you know, the, like I started getting follows on Instagram, clicking on them. I'm like, oh, this is an A&R for this person. Like I started having people reaching out to me from, from labels and stuff and, and, you know, different, a lot of A&Rs and stuff like for these different, like bigger time artists and, you know, more major artists and stuff. So yeah, after the Casanova thing and working with TJ Porter definitely helped me a lot too. Like working with TJ helped, me with you know new york like he's like you know kind of like in the same he, he came up with like lil tj tj porty jake guapo all of them so like when i was doing like i had produced tricky for him that also helped you know bring like a level of like all right this guy's a real producer so mm -hmm. working with tj and definitely casanova is also and do you still work with tj oh uh, yeah of course i always i'm in contact with him i still i still work with him and stuff we, he has, um, I think he's putting a project out soon that I'm on. I have a few songs on it, so. Oh, nice. That's yeah. cool. Hell Are yeah. you excited about it? Yeah, definitely. I can't wait. I can't wait. He's one of my favorite artists to work with, for sure. I really like DJ Porter. And how did you say you got connected with him? Was that through the Beat Camp? That was through, um, that was before the Beat Camp. That was through uh, Trevor's manager. Mm -hmm. um, was friends with, well, is friends with Wayno who was uh, managing TJ Porter. So uh, Wayno needed like uh, just a producer and somewhere to record. So like I offered my house, of course. And um, that's how I started working with him just through, he, he wasn't really like, he was in like the, the very d developmental steps of, of his career. This is way, way, uh, it's like maybe a year and a half or two years ago now. But um, yeah, this is when he was just first starting off. So like he didn't have many songs out or, or anything. He had to kind of like, learn what he was doing in a studio and stuff like here. So that's how, how I started working with him. How did you meet um, Trevor? He's from my town. He went to my high school and like I, I had known him. He's two, two, two years younger than me in my brother's grade. So my brothers were always friends with him and like through like sports and stuff like that. Like mm -hmm. my, my dad knew his dad and stuff, but I didn't even know he was really making music until one of his friends um i was at like my friend's house one of his friends was there told me yo you got to work with this kid trevor blah 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 and like 
I always say this, like I knew like this is back before he was really singing with auto tune or anything like that. Like mm -hmm. it's just like very, very raw vocals, like no effects or anything. I just like, I could hear his in his voice. Like he definitely just had something. So that's how I just literally just reached out to him. I was like, bro, come to the studio. It was like after school one day after baseball practice or something, he came <laughs> over. Yeah. So how long was you like, I'm sorry, real quick. That was also the, like the first time someone even, like wrapped on anything that I produced. Like I was like, I, I had told you, like I, I wasn't really producing cause I, I wasn't at that point, but like I had like a few beats like here and there that I would make. It would take me like a week to make one and he wrapped on it. So that was Wow. And how long has, have you been working with him for then? So just a few years now? Yeah, like three, four years now. We just, ever like as soon as we started, <clears throat> started it was kind of like, just like a quick connection, you know? Yeah, you guys put out a lot of music. It seems like you're releasing something every month or so. Even yeah, we're even trying to stay active. Trying to stay as active as possible. Definitely. And some of your stuff is blowing up with him too, isn't it? Like Bad Behavior got a lot of recognition. Yeah, that's, that, 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 that song is I'll be doing well because I got Haas and I got Trevor on it. Um, I, that's, something, that's one thing I, I'm looking to do more in the future is drop songs just like as me mm -hmm. with, you know, like featuring other artists. Because like I like doing that because like bad behavior for one it probably wouldn't have came out just with the way both of their sounds are like the direction of their sounds and you know Haas is putting out his project Trevor's working on his project so like I like putting out singles like that with the music video just to add to add something to it but mm -hmm. also to bring out sounds out of the artists that they wouldn't normally they wouldn't normally put on on their own you know now did you ever see yourself becoming just a musician instead of uh, producer yeah like before I met Trevor and before I started just like producing like really hard like full-time like actually going like trying to make good rap beats like that's what I was doing I was playing in like bands and stuff and like we were just going and finding gigs like wherever we could at bars or you know like restaurants and stuff like that I was always like I wanted to be a drummer at, at, at first definitely yeah just right. a full-on drummer I, and, and also I wanted to be like uh um before like the producer thing became re realistic i want to be like a session drummer like just just be like work at the studio and be a drummer for like if someone ha is doing like an album or something i would be the you know like the ghost ghost drummer or whatever you want to call it but yeah do something like that oh so all of this producing and like working with big names is just it's recent, it seems like. Yeah, this is all, <clears throat> honestly, shout out to L. L really helped me, but this is all recent. Yeah, like this stuff, it was not saying that Trevor's career is not, you know, whatever, but <clears throat> really what I was at first was Trevor's right-hand man. Mm -hmm. And then L, once L came into the picture, it turned into my own, you know, like, all right, this is what we're going to, like, always going to work with Trevor and always going to do my thing with him and with all the other artists that I have relationships with even Haas and stuff like that but when Al came in the picture he was like all right so like this is our formula we're going to do it like this and it's going to be focused on you just so that you know like I have my own thing going like more than just like a beat maker producer like you know mm -hmm. so like, I have my you're own getting time. really good at it just like hours and hours and hours of work and also working with people like Mitch, for example, mm -hmm. and like other other producers, like that's one of the the pieces of uh, pieces of advice that Al had me, uh, that Al gave me was to always like constantly keep working with, with other producers and more importantly producers that are at a higher level than you. So that because like when I'm watching Mitch like work, and I'm just sitting there in the background like seeing what he's doing on the computer, like uh, I learned a whole new software just just working with Mitch like mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like so he he gave me fruit loops and i now that's what i use you know so like working working with with uh people that are better than me definitely helped me out and you met mitch through l right yeah i met mitch through l they're actually living in the same building or something like that so oh i didn't know that l lived in the same building yeah i don't think he lives there anymore but th this is uh this was back like a few months ago uh he had just told me to pull up and um uh, I didn't even know who Mitch was at, at that point, but then like you, I, you open that door and it's like the coolest like one room studio ever. It's like the coolest place ever. It's like a spaceship. They win first records, mm -hmm. uh, sign all across the, the, on the wall. wall. Yeah, it's sick. I saw that. I was like, wow, that's awesome. As to like once, once I saw that, that's when I redid my whole studio. 
<laughs> swear to God, I, I saw it in my whole studio. I started putting the foam up and making it look cool because Mitch had his, his uh, like done up. Yeah, because I I would hang out with him and his his girlfriend all the time over at their mm. place because I'm really close to the both of them. Mm. And I was with them when the artist Dot did the signage for him. Yeah, he's he's so dope. Shout out to Dot one time too. He's so yeah. dope. And I, as I was looking at him do the art, I was like, damn, this is cool. Yeah, I would never just, think to put a sign that large on one of my walls. I know. I was like, are you allowed to do that, bro? Like, that's, <laughs> He's like, yeah, no, it's just paint. And I was like, bro, that's so sick. It's his whole logo, like, just mm -hmm. directly, like, huge on his wall. It's, it's fucking sick, yeah. Yeah, and that, that was his goal, too, because Mitch really takes pride in his work. And mm -hmm. that's why when he recommended you, I was, I was like, okay, I'm sure his art is really good, because obviously. Yeah, coming, coming from Mitch, that, that means a lot, for sure. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you, what are some of the struggles that you've seen as a producer? Because one of my main goals is to help people get to a place where you're at or higher, essentially. Like, there are all these different artists and producers who, they might see small successes, but eventually they need to see some consistency. So how did you, uh, like, what was your story, like your backstory? Um, well, really, like, as far as struggles go with it, like you, like being a producer, it's, it's, it's different than an artist. Cause you're always in the background of stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's hard for like, there's the, the main thing for me, first off is it's just so oversaturated. So it's so hard to like get, like, I was lucky having someone like Trevor, who's so, so talented of an artist already. He kind of like made me sound better, you know, like they would hear songs like that like that I've done with him and it, like it makes me it makes my beats sound better because what he does to them so I credit him a lot and uh, a lot of the artists that I worked with early on but yeah it's it's like uploading to YouTube and stuff like that and just trying to do like like trying to get you know your beats heard on YouTube is really difficult too because of how oversaturated it is so that's definitely my 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 main thing is is the most difficult thing is how oversaturated and my solution to that is just to try to be as different as possible i try to do you know myself with the guitar do live stuff like for content on instagram and youtube and i'm working on more stuff like that too like trying to get you know like do covers of songs and you know like like acoustic versions of songs and stuff like that i'm working on so like yeah like definitely the oversaturation is one thing another thing is um this is really specific, but my producers know what I mean when I talk about this is waiting to hear back from artists. Like mm -hmm. a lot of times you'll have like that beat that you know is the beat and like you'll send it out and you won't hear back for however long, you know, like it could be months, weeks, whatever. And like, it's tricky when it gets to that situation. Cause it's like, do I send this beat to somebody else? Cause I know that they'll kill it. And then a lot of times, and this has happened to me before is like, I'll end up sending it to somebody else. And then two people are on the beat at the same time. And mm. it puts me in a tricky situation because it's like, you gave it to me first, blah, blah, blah. So. How do you handle something like that? Um, it, it's weird. It really depends on the re the relationship I have with the person, you know, like not, not to be, not, not to sound like a jerk or anything, but like, like you, usually it's like, it, once I get payment, whoever gives me payment, like I like to work professionally like that once we work something out. But, um, if it's just like a random person or like a friend of mine, then usually like it's not a big deal, you know, just use it. Someone else could use it too. Like there like there's there's producers like for example, Zaytoven, one of the biggest producers ever. Mm -hmm. He sends everyone all the same beats, you know. So like for the producer it's really not much of an issue because what what as a producer you can do is just register the song on whether it's ASCAP or BMI. You mm -hmm. could just even if it's the same beat you could register your song like register yourself as a writer and a producer on both of them and collect on both of them so you could do that how did you start learning about the legalities of publishing i'm still still learning about the legalities of publishing <laughs> every day i'm still learning uh shout out to lamont graves i i watch uh, like i've watched one of his seminars so far and that taught me like so much about everything like how how to collect publishing with like song trust and like stuff like that so really like the way i learned about all the legalities of all this stuff is one 
watch the, just watching and learning through whether it's seminars, books, YouTube videos, like Instagram, like however I could, I, I try to always learn. And, um, what was the second thing I was going to say? I blanked out, but yeah, basically, basically just Lamont Graves taught me so much when it comes to that. Yeah. Um, what about some other struggles? What else? Um, just making money is, is so difficult, you know, like, which is again, why Lamont and the seminars that he runs, like taught me about stuff like sync licensing. And this is something that most, like I try to teach all the producers because a lot of them don't know what that is. So like you can sync license, you can, you can get your songs placed for movies and stuff like that. And like, it could be not like, it could be a beat that no rapper ever wanted to use, but it could fit in like a movie or like, a three second clip of a commercial you know and mm -hmm. like you can get paid that way um I've, I've started to learn how to how to sell beats online you know like through just reading like marketing tactics and doing deals and stuff like that like all different sorts of things that, that you can do but yeah that's one of the that that's really honestly like the main struggle is is just trying to earn a sustainable living and balance like a side hustle with producing you know and that's all artists have that issue but mm -hmm. that's definitely one of, one of the biggest struggles where do you make most of your money from um with your beats um most of my money comes from royalties between you know the the, the casanova song like he's with a major label so they have the major label push and playlisting and stuff like that and um yeah like TJ Porter stuff does well on Spotify. Trevor stuff does really well on Spotify. So like I try to just work with, and it, it's weird because I also like to, obviously I like to work with artists that are, you know, that don't have that platform yet. Mm -hmm. But I try to work with um, a lot of the people that I do work with just at the level that I'm at are streaming decently well on Spotify and stuff like that. So um, I, I do decent with, with my royalties right now. Uh, it could be more, but I do whatever I could, you know, I also run sessions here. Like, mm -hmm. when, you know, before this Corona thing, I run, you know, like hourly sessions and I have people come and, and do that. So that's oh, so you actually run your studio like a business. Yeah, I try to run it like a business. Definitely. Like I, and I could do a lot. Like I, I have people who that that's one thing I, like I've always wanted. Like it's, it's to me, it's very important to be well rounded with everything. So like between the, like playing instruments, producing and being able to engineer and mix and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I can offer all that for, for anybody. So like I, I've had people come in here just for sessions with producing, like someone that I needed to beat, I'll sit there and make a beat for them right in front of them. So that they're comfortable paying me because I'm doing exactly what they want in front of them. So. Now, how do you decide on who you want to work with and, and who you don't? So do you just have an ear for it or is it like whoever is paying you get some time? Yeah, it's for me. It's it's really not, especially at, at this stage. It's really not about the money at all. Like, obviously, if someone <clears throat> is gonna offer me money, then like we could do it like that. But um, a lot of the artists that I like to work with are people that I just genuinely enjoy listening to. You know, so if it's like like someone like Haas or Trev, who I put music out with like myself like that's just because we have the genuine like organic relationship same thing with tj porter you know like it's never like yeah bro come over but it's, it's letting you know it's gonna be this much blah, blah, blah. like i like to work with people i really enjoy listening to mm -hmm. i can tell that you're passionate about your music because it's hard to manage the business side of things when you're an artist it's yeah. really really hard yeah but i can tell that you're passionate about it because you're always pushing your music out and it's, it doesn't seem salesy or anything. You're just pushing it out all the time. Just nonstop. Yeah, I know. It could, it could be annoying. I'm trying to annoy some, some no. of my followers from my town and stuff. <laughs> but I just got to, yeah, just keep it going. Like all, all the, all the, uh, I try to, you know, make little meme videos and, and I, I, all my like content as far as promotion is all me. Like I make, you know, videos like moving animations and stuff like that i try to make cool backgrounds and stuff fit mm -hmm. into you know my story and stuff like that i i really like i put time into all that kind of stuff that all goes into dropping a song for me and i never just put it out how do you do all of that stuff too because i know that a lot of 
artists struggle with the creative side of it when it comes to the visuals. Like they're really good at rapping, but they don't know how to get their visuals out. How do you? Yeah, it's it's it? it's super to me. It's it's super important to to look professional. You know, like you see all these artists that are signed to labels, they have like their their swipe up stories like looking like super professional like it, it, it's like the right size and it's got you know part of the video and on top it says like out now and the bottom it'll show like apple music all that stuff like i i just use apps like on on my phone and stuff like that to, to make those those types of stuff but like uh for example like the the bad behavior video mm-hmm that was shot by my friend who doesn't even shoot music videos. Like he, he doesn't, he has, he, he's, he really just shoots like pictures and stuff mm-hmm. and um, like stuff like that. But he has a, a camera that films. So I had him film it for me and I had, I scavenged Instagram for like days to find like a cheap, um, like grab, not graphic designer, but like a video editor. Mm-hmm. So like what I did was I had my friend shoot it and I sent all the footage over to this kid that, just edited it for me professionally and it ended up looking great you know like he sent it back and it, it was as if my friend directed it like it went smoothly and quickly so um for any artists and stuff like that or producers that need content like just use like you got to use instagram or a- any platform to your advantage like social media because there's people out there and there's people out there that, that are doing it for very cheap mm-hmm what are some of those apps that you use so say if i were an artist or producer that wanted to use some i don't know create a meme or make some visuals for instagram what are the apps that you think would be helpful for them yeah i got my phone now right now one everybody knows this one i'm sure but this is pixart pixart is uh you could do so much with that app as far as like i've made so many cover arts just on pixart Mm mm-hmm and they have like stickers and stuff you could have the parental advisory and do the right size of stuff and then uh this app i use for the videos and stuff you can make like instagram story size videos it's called video leap just some random thing i found on on the app store but it does it does the job and you said you make memes too where did those come from those i (laughs) i find them i steal all of them to be honest (laughs) with you but i just find the craziest shit on Twitter and uh, I'll just like take the video and use that app that I just told you about, or I'll just iMovie on my Mac and just take the audio out from the video and put my song on there instead. <laughs> yeah. I still, I just steal stuff, but it works. People love it. Now you said that you're really, that you've always been really big into music. Are you in any music communities that have helped you grow as an artist or as a producer? Um, well, Right now, what me and my manager have is this little team of, of producers. There's uh, four of us. It's me, uh, this guy named Slim Dollars, this dude Langfather, and this guy La Chalaire. And it's just a, a group of producers that we have. And that's been extremely helpful and extremely beneficial for all of us because it's just like four like or five creatives just like bouncing ideas off of each other constantly like what what we do is like we'll we'll have an artist in mind when we're making the beat we'll we'll make the beat and like one person will start it someone else will add something change something someone else will add so that's definitely um uh as far as the community goes this this group of producers that that we have is is definitely uh a beneficial part of of, of what we do for sure and before all this quarantine stuff is happening were you meeting with these people on the regular or were you just sending each other yeah we 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 were, we were sending at least weekly sessions like usually it's it, it'll be like more like like twice a week something like that once a week whatever it is but uh we all meet in uh there, we have a studio in, in union city that we work out of in uh jersey and that's like the asylum like headquarters like the, the offices or whatever so we go there and um yeah we work in person like at least once a week definitely did TJ Porter introduce you to L? Uh, well, L, yeah, basically he did actually, yeah, because he had come to my house one time with with L, um, just a random day of recording, and yeah, I met him there. So yeah, TJ did introduce me to L. That's cool. It sounds like you met a good amount of people in the music industry in such a short amount of time. Yeah, it, and like, really, a lot of it was luck. Like a lot of it is just you know like. It, it, they they were brought to me like with TJ and stuff, but I try to make the most out of out of my relationship, you know, because like 
meeting TJ Porter li- led me to meeting Wayno and L, who are like they they know everybody, you know. So like, it, it, you just have to be as proactive as you could as far as like networking and stuff like that, because like you really never know who knows who and who could help you with what, you know. Like I never knew like like I'd end up having TJ Porter's manager as my manager now. So mm-hmm. like you just got to stay stay active and always like keep in touch and you know if you meet somebody just hit them up again and say yo if you need anything hit me up blah 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 stuff like that when you meet different artists that you work you want to work with or you meet people in the music industry what's your process with introducing yourself because i think a lot of new producers they'll just send their beats out and sometimes they're not targeted so how do you do it yeah, I don't like to, I mean, I, everyone sends beats out and stuff, but like, especially if it's a new artist, like that I've never worked with before, like, I like to get in the studio. So like, I'll send them beats, like, at first, this is, this is how my process usually goes, I'll send them beats at first. And like, once they like them, and like, say we do a song or whatever, like, then, you know, I'll keep sending them, I'll just keep in touch with them, like, you know, like just talk to them on social media and stuff. Like I, I treat social media like, like it's a room full of people, honestly. Like, mm-hmm. so I'll just constantly, you know, just chop it up with them and stuff. And then like, eventually I try to, you know, like lead it to a session, like eventually, you know, like try to like link with them in person so that I can see how I work in person. Uh, if it's someone that I, I've just met in person, like off the, off the bat, like uh, what I like to, what I like to do is not really like, obviously I'll int- introduce myself. What's up? My name is Azar, produce, blah, blah, blah. But like, I like to just not do too much really. Like, you know, just, just be cool. Like, and, and while we're working on the song, you know, like tell them like, cause I always, like I said, I always have ideas of how the songs go. So like maybe go like whisper in the, the artist's ear, like, yo, do it like this instead, blah, blah, blah. Try to sing a melody, try to do something like that. So that they see that like, I'm really like, trying to work on their song with them and like I'm doing more than just playing the beat so because like a lot of times like artists like get stuck when they're making songs like they they have trouble with the stuff and a lot of times they'll just scrap the song instead so like I like to you know try to offer like like an actual musical opinion instead of just playing a beat and sitting in the back smoking or whatever do you have a pretty technical background since you used to play instruments or still Uh, do you play instruments yeah like a, a decently technical background like I know like a decent amount of music theory and stuff like that which really helps me do you think that produce that would help producers be better producers or do you think that they really need that uh like i don't think you need it because there's i know a lot of producers that that a lot of placements and more placements than me and you know without knowing music theory but like at least for me personally it really helped me a lot with with like just how how to structure a song and stuff like that you know like it's really important to know like some some people like like the way i do it like it, it's very clear in my beats when you know the the hook is and when the verse is and like i like to do a lot of like like technical stuff like that just just because it's it, it makes it sound more professional you know and like as far as making chords and melodies and stuff like that like it, it's natural instinct for me at this point because i know theory and stuff like if there's an off note or like something that's not in the right key or something like that, like I'll be able to hear it right away and say, yo, fix this and change it, blah, blah, blah. So mm-hmm. yeah, I don't think it's necessary, but it's always beneficial if, if you know, like how not, not necessarily like how to read sheet music or stuff like that, but like just to know how like notes and scales work is really important for chords. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what about right. some technical advice that you would give producers? Cause now you've been exposed to different softwares and, you worked with some pretty high-end artists. Um, any technical advice for a producer? Technical meaning meaning what? So any software that you would suggest or? Um, oh yeah, with the, with the softwares and, and anything like that, man. Like it's just whatever you're comfortable with, you know. Like I know people who use like who use like softwares that come with like like um, what is it? Native Instruments makes this. Uh, it makes this like beat pad and it comes with like its own little software. And I know people who make fire beats just out of that. And like, I know people who use FL, obviously everyone uses that. I was using logic for the longest time and still like making good sounding beats. So like, it's really just like whatever you can get like a comfortable and quick work th- workflow out of is, is the most important. Like I really don't think software matters so much. 
What are some other issues that you see with, or not issues, but what struggles do you see artists having with working with producers? And that you've seen as a pattern? Uh, yeah, a lot of times, and this is why I like to, you know, work in person with people or like work from scratch with people is like, there, there have been times I've been in the studio with artists and like they're playing beats from someone that, that somebody sent them or whatever. And like, there will be one noise in the, in the beat or like one instrument that like the artist just hates and like really wants it out. But because the producer's not there, he can't do anything about it. So like the producer just lost the placement just because of one, one instrument, you know? So that's one thing for sure. Um, How do you navigate that situation though? Is that, um, if that happens and you're working with, with someone and they don't like something in a producer's beat, then do you just scrap it? Yeah, a lot of times, like, if the producer's not there in person, then they just scrap the song, you know? So, mm-hmm. like, that's that's definitely, like, one, one of the biggest struggles with artists working with producers is that they're not on the same page as far as sound, you know? Which is why, like, which is where, you know, music theory and stuff like that would also help because, you know, like, if you're just more aware of how you want something to sound, then you can kind of take charge and say, because, like, a lot of, like, these artists are, obviously musicians themselves as well with their voice but like a lot of them don't know what the producers know as far as like how sound is supposed to go and stuff so like um it gets it gets tricky in situations like that yeah but Mm -hmm. any other issues that you see or struggles um it's in in my experience nothing crazy now i mean besides that like there's a lot of producers that are just hard-headed with how they want their stuff to sound you know like they they kind of just don't listen and they'll make the beat really fast like they, one thing for sure is like is is well you'll have an artist there and then you'll have the producer there and the artist wants to start recording you know what i mean like they're that's it they got the idea down they want to start and the producer needs to do this or that to the beat whatever like ends up taking a whole separate you know half hour ju- just to finish up the, like w- what they had started and then mm-hmm. by then the artist kind of lost interest in it so that's another thing i've seen happen your experience is interesting because you've really only been producing seriously for the last year but it seems like especially when you talk about it it seems like you've been producing for a long time yeah like i have technically been producing for like five five-ish years now for sure like so and I was always aware of like theory and and stuff like that like and aware of I don't know making hip-hop beats is is so different than making everything else because like you have to like 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 sometimes you have to make stuff like it's it's kind of hard to explain but like put stuff in certain spots you normally wouldn't like in like drum patterns are a little bit different than like like playing a you know rock and roll song or something like that like Mm -hmm. it's it's, like those songs are like they follow a certain rhythm that hip-hop beats are so much different with so like um i have been doing it for a while but like really actually doing it as a career in hip-hop was within the last year two years yeah for sure but just because of my experience with even when i was playing in bands i was messing around with with recording us and and stuff like that so i was always like into the software aspect and into you know doing it but yeah like through um like through working with more artists and stuff like i was kind of forced to like all right like really sit and actually learn everything do you still want to produce edm Music. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I've. It, it's much more difficult to make than than hip hop music. Like making beats, it'll take me like twenty minutes, ten minutes to, to make a beat, and like you cook a bunch in one day, send them, and have a song by the end of the day. Whereas when I'm making EDM music, and I have stuff done that I'm planning on releasing soon with the right, uh, you know, with the right push and everything. But mm-hmm. um, it's just so much more difficult to make to me. But I really think making that kind of music is super cool because like the producer is, is the artist in, in that situation. So I, I really, I admire a lot of the EDM producers. I think what they do is like incredible the way, the way they, the way they can use the softwares and stuff like there's, it's so much more difficult for sure to make that kind of music than hip hop. A lot of the artists that I've interviewed have said that 
one thing they struggle with is their identity, like discovering what their real identity is. Do you feel like you have that kind of struggle with producing? Yeah, not even, I mean, not, not as bad as artists, obviously, because they really need to be a whole character, like when they're, you know, presenting themselves. But even with me, yeah, it's, that's something that I've had issues with, like putting out songs myself and stuff. Like I'm trying to create a little bit of a fan base for myself, like aside from just being that guy who produced on that album. Mm -hmm. So like I've definitely struggled and I'm still trying to figure out what, you know, I'm about besides just a guy who makes beats, you know, like it's, it's, it's easier to like grab, like, like people gravitate towards artists and stuff who have the image, you know, which is why you, you see all these artists with colored hair, just looking absolutely crazy when you, when, when you walk by them, you know, if you see like, you, you could see someone in New York and be like, Oh, I could tell that guy is like a rapper or something, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's definitely something that's difficult for me that I'm struggling with is, is trying to, find my image or like how I want to present myself to other people because to me I'm just myself but like to someone else like I'm, I'm I don't even have like a huge fan base or anything but like I've been approached like going to the mall and stuff by people who know me around Jersey and stuff so it's like I need to think about how I want myself to look like not just physical but like my whole brand like what am I about you know mm-hmm so Has Al helped you out with a lot of that stuff too? Yeah, yeah, that de definitely he's helped me a lot. We're we're trying to work on you know, just different fashion stuff and and different things, you know, photo shoots and trying to get you know content out for everything that we put out. We 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 never like to just like put a song out and stuff like that. Like even bad behavior, like as decently well that it was you know put laid out and stuff like was kind of just thrown out there. Like, but with Al, he likes to do everything very structured and with with mm -hmm. purpose and stuff so like that's that's one thing that we're still when we have conversations about every day is is trying to you know get my branding out like one one person who i really admire is is a uh, metro booming obviously because of how well he does it like mm -hmm. everyone knows metro is that guy and like the, all the memes with future and stuff helped but um like him like murder beats like you hear murder you already know his logo with like the, the the drippy font and stuff it all matches with him you know you see him in person he's got all the jewelry and everything so like i gotta i'm i'm working to find some sort of you know balance with you know my branding and my musicianship and i don't know I try to put it all together make it look are good. you into fashion uh to an extent i am into fashion yeah. <laughs> i'm not really i'm not really like uh the fashionista of of the mall or whatever but I, I i definitely a fashion guy i used to love like supreme and and um and all that stuff i used to buy something from supreme every week like during the drop i was buying and selling but i was wasting too much money doing it so like as, as into it as i am in i try to just like not i wear sweatpants every day now and stuff just so i can like <laughs> you know like my, my goal is to get to the point where i can start buying clothes again and stuff you know so like for now it's just sweatpants and t-shirts and so <laughs> um cool well we got about 15 minutes left any cool. last minute gems for aspiring producers uh yeah man three, like three gems thank you of course and i appreciate you for having me shout out finesse media uh but um what's it called yeah really just don't chase placements it is my biggest thing don't like don't chase placements because like you'll just end up making yourself crazy sending beats out to people who who've never met you in person so like my thing is really get out of the bedroom you know get out your studio wherever you work out of and try to actually because like when i like I, i'm when I, when I go to these events and stuff like i meet people who know who i am already just by my name Mm -hmm. So like having, having the, 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 you know, seeing you in person is, is, it just is so much more important, you know, like you're, you're more likely to be the one that they call when they need to be, or they need someone to come to the session or something because they know you, they've met you before. So definitely get out of the bedroom, try to network wherever you could, even if you don't live in somewhere like New York or Cali or something like that, just whatever scene that there is tap into for sure. Um, and yeah, like don't chase placements. When I say that, I mean like, obviously you want to get big placements. Everyone wants big placements. That's where the money is and stuff. But like, work with like people around you that just have good sounds that you generally enjoy working with first, and 
as that builds up, you will build up with it. And then people will see what you're doing with that artist and stuff. They'll, they'll want, you know, a piece of it and stuff. So yeah, definitely. That's, that's my advice. Yeah. All right. So the first one was don't ch chase placements. The second don't one was um, get out of the bedroom. And then what was the third one? Uh, well, the third one I was just elaborating on, on, on not chasing placements. Just try to, what I was saying was just work with anyone you could locally and just build from that. Cause that's literally exactly what I did and it, and it worked. So. Nice. Um, and then where do you see yourself in the next year? Like anything that you really want to accomplish this year? Uh, this year I want to be able to like fully live off of my music, like fully off of just production, you know, like my, like a, a year to me, like I'm very realistic with, with how this goes and I've been doing this for a, like long enough to know like what a year is and like how unproductive a year could be as far as, you know, like money or like furthering yourself or like social media followers, however you want to scale it. But um, within the next year, I would like to at least be able to, you know, like buy myself a car. That's, that's my main goal. I want a car first. And All right. So your next interview. Right, I better have a car. Back. You better have a I car. Have the beamer. Yeah. I'm going to have the Beamer next time you see me. Facts. <laughs> Definitely. Um, cool. And then the, just lastly, what is, the best way to contact you and what do you want your followers and anyone who sees this to um, check up on? Yeah, just on all social, uh, Twitter and Instagram, you can just get me at uh, who is Azar. Um, follow me on there. Um, most importantly, just watch, watch my, my video on YouTube. It's also my, my account on YouTube is who is Azar. You can follow me on that, subscribe, whatever. Uh, SoundCloud is just who is Azar as well. So yeah, if you could just follow me on there. And When's your next release? Next release will be maybe next month-ish. We'll see. I'm, we're working on Trevor's project, and uh, I got some instrumental-only stuff coming out within the next month or two for sure. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. All right. Cool. Well, that's all I have for you today. Um, I am probably going to be hosting some events, like networking opportunities in the next few weeks. I have some people in – LA and um, New York City and Virginia that agreed to come on um, to either do a Q&A or more of like a networking thing where I'll lead some discussions and people have the chance to drop in. Um, but thank you. I'll invite you to anything that I, that I host. But I'm excited for you. Tell all of the artists that I get on these interviews, all of the artists and producers that I basically get music over and over. And that's thank you, why. Girl. That's why I wanted you to come on because you're really talented and Thank you so much. I think I really people need to know that. Thank you. Yeah, that, that, that's the goal. That's the main call. I just want people to hear it. So thank you. I really appreciate you giving me a platform. Yeah, cool. All right. Stay safe. Wash your hands. Right. Yeah, you too. Thank you so much. Thanks, Azar. Talk to you later. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.